Searching is one of the most common operations in computer science, and binary search is one of the most fundamental and powerful algorithms, cutting the search space in half at every step. Instead of scanning through everything one by one, it zooms in directly where the answer might be. This makes it exponentially faster than a simple linear search. In this video, we'll break down how binary search works, walk through a real example, and explore some interesting problems where this technique can be applied, like searching in rotated arrays, finding square roots, and optimizing AI models. By the end, you will see why binary search is an absolute must-know for every software engineer. So let's dive in. Let's say we have a sorted array. Now, if I ask you to find 23, you might quickly spot it just by looking at this array. But what if you could only check one number at a time? The simple way would be to start from the beginning and check each number one by one until you find 23 or reach till the end. This method is called linear search. It scans the array sequentially. Now, if 23 is near the start, we find it quickly. But if it's near the end, we might have to scan every element. For small arrays, this is fine. But for huge datasets, this becomes too slow. But since our array is sorted here, we can use a better method, binary search. In binary search, we jump to the middle of the array. The middle element here is 16. And since 16 is smaller than 23, we ignore the left half. So immediately, our search space shrinks by half. And then we jump to the middle of the remaining half. And now our middle is 42. And since 42 is greater than 23, we ignore the right half. We then jump to the middle again. Now the middle is 23. And so we found it. Note that at each step, the search space shrinks by half, making binary search incredibly efficient. All right, let's code it. Here is how binary search looks in Python. Let's walk through how the conditions work in the loop here. Here, if array of mid is equal to target, boom, we found it. We return the index. Else if array of mid is less than target value, the target is greater than mid and so we ignore the left half and move left pointer right. Else, if array of mid is greater than target, the target is smaller than mid, so we ignore the right half and move right pointer to left. Every iteration slashes the search space by half until we either find the target or run out of elements. Now, binary search is not just about finding a number. It's a powerful tool that can be applied in many tricky interview problems. For example, searching in a rotated sorted array. So let's say you have the following sorted array, but it's been rotated. The array was originally sorted as like this, but then it was rotated at index two. And your job is to find a specific number efficiently. A simple linear scan would take O of n time. But since both halves of the rotated array are still sorted, we can use binary search to solve it in O of log n. So we first find the middle element and then we check which side left or right is sorted. And then we decide where to search next. If the target lies in the sorted half, we search within that half. Otherwise, we search in the unsorted half. And we repeat this process until you find the target or the search space is empty. Let's go step by step to find our target 3 in this array. So we first find the middle element. In this case, array of mid is equal to 2. And is array of mid equal to target? No. So what do we do? We determine which half is sorted. So we know that array of left is 15, array of mid is 2, and our right is equal to 12. The right half, 2, 3, 6, 12, is sorted because we know array of mid is less than array of right. So now we need to decide where to search. So here, since target is equal to 3, is within the sorted right half of 2 to 12, we discard the left half and search within the right space. And then we repeat the process. Now, left is equal to 2, our right is equal to 5, so our mid or array of mid is equal to 3. And so we found it. Target 3 is at index 3. And here is the Python implementation. We start with two pointers. Left equal to 0, that's the beginning of the array. And our right is length of array minus 1, which is end of the array. The goal here is to continuously reduce the search space until we find the target. So every iteration, 
we calculate the midpoint using mid equal to left plus right by 2. And this gives us the middle index of the current search space. If the middle element is the target, we return the index immediately. Simple and O1 best case if the target is found in the first check. Now we need to determine which half of the array is sorted. And there are two possible cases. If the leftmost element is smaller than or equal to the middle element, this means the left half is sorted. If the target lies in this range, search in the left half. Otherwise, we discard the left half and search in the right. Or if the left half is not sorted, that means that the right half is sorted. And if the target is within this range, we search in the right half. Otherwise, we discard the right half and search in the left. And even this kind of binary search typically runs in O of log n because it halves the search space in every iteration. In a rotated sorted array, even though the array is rotated, we are still discarding half of the elements in the each step, which means the complexity remains O of log n. So best case, we are at O1, that is when we find the target at mid in the first check, or worst or average case, it is O of log n, that is each step reduces the search space by half. The key in case of rotated array was identifying the sorted half. It tells us where to search next. The underlying principle was basically binary search. But binary search isn't just about locating a number in a sorted list. It's a powerful tool that can be applied in all sort of scenarios. Let's look at two cool examples where binary search makes a huge difference. Imagine you need to find the square root of a number, say 50, but you can't use built-in functions like this. A brute force approach would be to try every number, squaring it until you get close to 50. But that's slow and inefficient, especially for large numbers. Instead, we can apply binary search. Here is how it works. We know the square root of 50 is somewhere between 1 and 50. So we start the middle value, 50 by 2, which is 25. Square it. 25 times 25 is 625, too high. So we discard everything above 25. And then we pick the new middle, which is 12. 12 times 12 is 144. Still too high. Shrink the range again. Try 7 times 7. 49. Super close. So by narrowing the range every step, we efficiently approximate the square root without testing every single number. The result is found in O log n time instead of O n brute force. Now think about Google search. When you type a query, it doesn't scan billions of web pages one by one. Instead, search engines index the data in a structured way, often using binary search to retrieve results in milliseconds. Relational databases like MySQL, PostgreSQL use B-trees, which is a variation of binary search, to quickly find records in sorted data. And this is why searching for a specific user or order in a database is blazing fast instead of taking seconds. Binary search isn't just an algorithm for coding interviews. It's everywhere in real-world applications. Whether it's optimizing mathematical calculations or speeding up search in large-scale systems, knowing how and where to apply it makes you a better software engineer.